Hello everyone and welcome back to the Jamzy Online YouTube channel. In today's video, we're doing a performance valve job on some 7.3 power stroke heads. And as we get started drilling our heads to install new valve guides, I'll give you a bit of a background on these heads, but I also want to encourage you to check out the links in our description as we were able to partner with some of our favorite companies in the industry to make this video happen. A little over three years ago, this customer had machine work done on their 7.3 at another shop, as our shop was pretty well shut down at the time. When the customer was doing the final work to get the engine running, they accidentally broke off an injector hold down bolt in one of the heads. They brought the head to us, but unfortunately we were unable to salvage the head. As such, the customer brought us a new core, which we built and simply swapped over the valve train parts from the original head. Fast forward three years and the customer experienced a blown head gasket. After pulling the heads, they noticed that on one bank of cylinders, the exhaust valves had just barely been kissing the pistons, so they brought both heads back to us to check out. After verifying piston protrusion and valve recession, nothing obvious stuck out to indicate that there would be a clearance issue. The customer is running a Colt Stage 2 cam, but it's advertised as being a drop-in with no additional machine work required. We decided we would take the heads apart, cut the seats to the deeper side of spec, resurface the heads, and possibly shim the valve springs to be a bit tighter based on recommendations from some of the people we had consulted. At this point, we realized that the previous shop had not installed valve seat inserts in the head that they did, and instead had simply cut the factory seats deeper and then excessively surfaced the head to get the proper valve recession. Our additional surfacing of close to five thousandths to make the head flat again after the blown head gasket left this head sitting close to twenty thousandths below the minimum thickness spec. By having the seats deeper in the head, it also loosens up the spring installed height on the top side of the head, so at this point we decided that the piston of valve contact on that bank may have been a result of poor valve train control. So while we do recommend the customer does a final piston of valve clearance check before running the heads again, we're going to rebuild another core head that is at the proper thickness to get them set up right. The head we did three years ago also had some surprising wear on the intake seats and valves given the short amount of runtime on the engine. So we're gonna go through it as well and we're gonna be making some upgrades to hopefully give this customer the best chances of success with their pickup. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me say that the foundation of every valve job is the valve guide. So we're drilling the heads to install new SB International high tensile strength cast iron guides. We checked the press fit of the guides coming in at around 2 thousandths interference, which is a good spot for a cast iron guide in a cast iron head. The last few years, I've been using Goodson PFL 200 press fit lubricant for installing guides with great success. In order to get the guides installed to the correct height, we have some spacers set up as a positive stop for our driver. Possibly the biggest upgrade that we're making on these heads is to get rid of the stock replacement valves, and in fact, the customer was probably lucky because when we disassembled the head that was done by a different shop, we found two valves that had nicks right in the transition area from the valve stem to the head of the valve. This happens when an operator makes a mistake when grinding a valve and crashes the edge of the grinding wheel into the transition area. We've made this mistake too, but we would never move forward with installing that valve in a customer's engine as it now has a stress riser and is only a matter of time until catastrophic failure occurs. We're upgrading to SBI nitrided race series valves, which we'll touch on in more detail here in a bit when we move on to cutting our seats. With our valve guides installed, the next step is to use our Goodson diamond valve guide home to size our guides to the desired clearance, as well as to ensure that we have a pilot for our sturdy valve seat tooling that's a good fit. Spec calls for anywhere between one and a half to five thousandths valve stem clearance, and when all was said and done, we came in around three and a half thousandths clearance. The replacement core head had never had seats installed, so we got it mounted up on the Surdy 4.5 valve seat machine and set up to cut the counter bores. The spindle stop is set for the thickness of the new seat inserts to prevent the counter bores from being cut too deep. When I began cutting, I discovered that these had to be the hardest factory cast iron seats I had ever encountered, and the cutter just didn't want to cut. Instead of thinking straight and slowing things down, I made the mistake of giving it more pressure and actually ended up chipping an insert of my counterbore cutter. Luckily, the counterbore was undamaged and we were able to rotate the insert to a new cutting edge and keep moving forward. On the rest of the seat counterbores, I kept the mister running some coolant on the tool and stayed pretty close to 50 RPM on the spindle until I could feel that I was past the factory hardening of the cast iron at which point I went ahead and sped back up the RPM and kept an eye on the DRO to make sure that our spindle stop stopped us at the correct depth. Considering the wear on the intake seats of the head we did three years ago, and the fact that the customer is running 550 horsepower to the wheels, we decided that we could toughen up these heads by installing SBI SB1750-4N star series valve seats in the exhaust positions as well as the intake positions. 
As such, we quickly ticked out the old intake seats to make room for the new ones. The SBI Star Series seats are made of a non-magnetic nickel-based material which retains its hardness above 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, offering superior wear characteristics in the harshest environments. Before we go ahead and do our valve job on the valve seats, we need to go ahead and resurface the head so that we have a nice surface to go off of when cutting our seats for the proper valve recession. The first head cleaned up in three thousandths, and the second head took about four and a half thousandths to clean up. This kept us above the minimum thickness on both the heads that the customer will be running, and I also went ahead and resurfaced the exhaust manifold sides of all three heads while I was at it on the surfacer. Finally, we're ready to cut our intake seats, so we have the head mounted up on the surdy, and with a pilot, we can double check that we are indeed level. For those of you who are new here, the surdy has a patented triple air float centering system. The entire head of the machine floats on air to get your tooling roughly centered on each valve guide. The head is then locked down, and a second planar air flow is released to float only the spindle and the motor, allowing the pilot to find the true center of the guide. Simultaneously, a spherical air float is released which allows the pilot to align with the true axis of the valve guide, at which point everything is locked rigid and a valve seat can be machined. Now, our race series intake valves are a fully machined 21-4N stainless steel alloy, which have been treated with SBI salt bath nitride, which impregnates into the alloy up to 10 micron to improve lubricity and improve wear resistance. For our multi-angle seat cutters, we're using the Goodson Black Smoke Series cutter blades, developed for Goodson by Joe Mondella Racing Engines for high-performance diesel engines, and in this case for 7.3 Power Stroke specifically. We're setting our intake cutter such that the seat angle contacts the valve's face just outside of center, and then we'll begin our first cut. Again, these seats are super hard and therefore difficult to cut, so you'll see me playing a lot with the RPM and pressure as we go. Since the seat angle has started to come in, we can put a valve in place and measure the recession so that we can get an accurate zero point. Depending on where you check, it looks like the highest is about 23 thousandths recession, so we'll go back with our cutter, touch off on the seat, zero the DRO, then raise the spindle to 23 thousandths, and zero the spindle again. From there, we can continue to cut the seat until the DRO reads within the allowed tolerance of 46 to 58 thousandths recession. We're actually shooting for the middle at 52 thousandths. Again, you're witnessing the process of experimenting to see what works with this combination of seat profile and material. Sometimes it takes a bit to get the right combination of speeds and pressure to eliminate the chatter and get a true concentric seat. The trick that always seems to help me the most, and I can't remember who taught me, is to get about to your finished depth, stop the spindle, set it to the maximum speed, and when you start the spindle, as it's ramping up, give the seat one last touch. Now to double check, we came in right about at our target of 52 thousandths valve recession. With some color on the valve, we can also see that our seat is contacting the valve face just outside of center, just like we were hoping for. And for one last check, the seat runout gauge is telling us that we're just under 1,000th runout, and while I would love to say that I was always under a half thou on every seat I cut, one thou is well within acceptable tolerance, and I'm happy considering how hard these seats are. Real quick everyone, if you want to support the channel and future videos, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, drop a comment for us to read, and most of all, be sure to check out our partners and sponsors at the links in the description. Our race series exhaust valves are also fully machined and nitrided, but they're a 23 8N stainless alloy instead. Again, we're using a Goodson Black Smoke series cutter blade developed specific for the 7.3 Power Stroke engines, but on the exhaust side, we tried to keep the seat centered on the valve face. The process is identical to the intake side. Cut until our seat comes in, double check our depth, set our zero, and cut to the finish depth.
We check the valve recession on every seat as we go, and on the exhaust, our spec is 52 to 64 thousandths, so we aimed for 58, but anywhere within the range is okay. Some color also showed that we hit right in the center of the valve like we wanted, and I did check the run out on every seat as we went, with most sitting around that 1,000th mark. As always, we also vacuum check every seat as we go, as we feel it's the best indicator of if a valve is going to seal correctly. It's also much easier to fix an issue while we're here on the Surti, as opposed to finding out it's an issue later on. Unfortunately, the intake are tough to check on these heads, as they don't have individual ports, so we have to try to hold the pad over the valve on the chamber side, while also holding the valve shut on the stem side, and that vacuum is stronger than you think. With all of our seat profiles machined, the last step of machine work that we have on the 7.3 heads is something new that we haven't tried before in our shop. The Goodson Diesel Relief Tooling, again developed for Goodson by Joe Mondello Racing Engines. The kit includes an offset pilot, an indexing pin, and a radius relief cutter designed to increase low lift airflow and increase torque and horsepower. Essentially, the offset pilot is installed into the valve guide of the seat you want to relieve, and the indexing pin is installed into the opposite guide of that cylinder. Then a clamp bar is tightened to the offset pilot to properly index it, and the goal is to cut more relief toward the opposite valve and not cut into the head gasket firing area. Typically I don't like to run my Surti tool holders on a dead pilot like this, but in this case we really don't have a different option. The pilot here is mainly there for the initial locating, and honestly it's much less rigid than the Surti is with a live pilot in the guide, so a little bit of chatter is to be expected. I actually found it chattered worse though at low RPM than at high. The relief tool is actually pretty slick and easy to use, and I was pretty happy with the results. You simply cut until the top angle of your seat profile blends with the relief, and while the intake side is probably the most important, the kit instructions do say you can do the exhaust side if desired, so we figured we would give it a go on both. While we probably could have increased the cutter diameter a bit, we figured we would play it safe to avoid getting into the gasket sealing area. That being said, we think we did end up at a good spot to get the low lift flow benefits of the relief tooling. As always, prior to the assembly, the heads get a final wash in our spray cabinet, followed by having every bolt hole and passage rinsed and blown dry. The new core head that we're building got some new stainless steel freeze plugs, as well as some SBI brass injector cups. We actually have two installation tools for the injector cups, one that my dad bought and another that he made when I was about a year old, so I used the homemade one for fun. Part of the challenge with these heads when they came in was that the previous shop didn't list part numbers on the invoice for many of the items such as the valve springs. As such, we went through and tested every spring at the closed heights and open heights to verify their pressures. Here in our shop, we've been using Fitron Automotive Machine Shop software to build our customers' invoices, and on a performance application like this, we can actually use their built-in specification sheets to document all of the critical specifications, which not only helps the customer know exactly what they have down the road, but it also helps us as we stamp the invoice number on the heads so that we can identify them and their specifications if we ever get a comeback. After double-checking our valve recession, we can also measure our spring height so that we know exactly how much we need to shim the springs to get the desired seat pressure. As mentioned earlier in the video, we're stiffening up the springs from where they were installed the last time based on recommendations of some of the experts we consulted and in hopes of improving our valve train control. Rather than doing all of our shimming under the SBI Viton top hat valve stem seals and decreasing our spring retainer to seal clearance, we had to modify some off the shelf shims in the crankshaft grinder to make them fit above the seal, leaving us with a comfortable 100 thousandths clearance at max lift. Once the heads are fully assembled, we always like to do one last vacuum check, and we were pleased with the results. All said and done, this customer is set up with what we're hopeful will be a durable set of heads offering great performance, as well as a spare head and SBI head saver shim to compensate for the lack of minimum thickness if he ever has a stock 7.3 that he needs to get down the road. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.